Welcome to North Georgia News Now. Coming up today in local news, earlier this week, Dalton's new mayor, Annalise Sams, was sworn into office. Before the regular mayor and city council meeting, a meet and greet was held at City Hall so the community could get out and get to know Sams a little better. WDNN's Shane Franks was on the scene. And the Whitfield County Board of Assessors has sent out mailing of personal property return forms and announced a new e-return portal. West Hill Cemetery cleanup is set for January 16th through 19th. The Georgia Department of Public Health announces widespread flu activity. And as temperatures drop, so do gas prices in Georgia, says AAA. Plus meet the Humane Society of Northwest Georgia's Pets of the Week. But be forewarned, they're awfully cute. And later, Susan Ridley is here to share WDNN's community calendar. But first, here are the obituaries. Today's local news is brought to you by Sean Wallen of Wallen Realty. Welcome back to your local news. On Monday, January 8th, Dalton's new mayor, Annalise Sams, was sworn into office. WDNN's Shane Franks was on the scene. Here's how that went. Hey guys, I'm Shane Franks from North Georgia Television, and today we have our new mayor, Annalie, Miss uh, Annalie Sams, how are you? Yes, hi, I'm glad to be here, thank you. Wonderful. So, uh, did you ever see yourself here today? Well, serving on city council the past six years, the opportunity was coming to run for mayor, and I'm excited to have that opportunity. I'm excited that it turned out well and to be elected, and I appreciate very much the support from this community. And what I'm looking forward to most is to continue the excellent projects that Mayor Pennington and his team um, of the council that I was a part of that we've really put in place to um, really give the support to the professional staff because they are the ones that make things happen on a day-to-day -day basis. Awesome. So is there anything in your crosshair, something you plan on tackling right off the bat on day one? Well, I think what we're going to do is we have so many great projects that are coming to fruition. Among those are the mill line completion, at least this phase. So to get out as soon as we have a break in the weather and really enjoy that will just be another one of the great things that are here to enjoy in Dalton. And just in case you did not know, this is Dalton's first female mayor, and everybody's very excited about that. So but how do you feel about that? Well, I'm excited about it. Um, I'm, I'm excited to be in a position to continue to lead things forward, and it's, all, and it's exciting to be, to be the first for certain. Today I've got Jason from the Dalton Chamber. So what would you like to see this upcoming year with uh, with the change in mayors? Well, I think Mayor Annalise Sams is bringing a fresh look to our city. She's been a part of our community for generations. When she ran on her campaign, she ran on the Parks and Rec, she ran on the community. And I think she's going to really dive deep into our community and make, continue to make our community stronger and a place to live, work, and play. Just super excited for to see a first female mayor be sworn in tonight and um, excited about her focus on the things that are important with Believe Greater Dalton and the strategic plan. Extremely excited about that and how we continue to take the great things that have happened in downtown Dalton and move them out to the corridors that surround downtown and just community pride, just how we continue to tell the story of all the great things that are happening here. 
I just want to applaud our entire community for we are the leaders of Northwest Georgia and to do that we have to continue to be engaged and we have a wonderful community that's very diverse and I, I just look forward to the next four years. Well, Miss Mary, it has absolutely been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you, Shane and Mayor Sams. Council members Tyree Goodlett and Dennis Mock also took the oath of office following their November re-election, with Goodlett sworn in as the mayor pro tem. The council members voted 4-0 to zero to approve the reappointments of Police Chief Cliff Kaysen, Fire Chief Matt Daniel, and Municipal Court Judge Rob Cowan. Daniel was also reappointed as the city's fire mar marshal, the position he held before his promotion last fall. He will continue in that role until a replacement is identified. Sam's presented a list of citizen appointments to the city's various standing boards and commissions that oversee the operations of city departments. The next meeting of the mayor and council is Monday, February 5th. City offices will be closed on Monday, January 15th in observation of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which would have been the next regularly scheduled meeting date. A rescheduled meeting for January 16th has been canceled. In other news, the Whitfield County Board of Assessors has announced that they mailed personal property returns on around 7,000 personal property accounts. The last day to submit a timely return is Monday, April 1st. A 10% penalty will be assessed on returns submitted after the April 1st deadline. Personal property tax in Georgia includes any furniture, fixtures, equipment, machinery, and inventory used in the normal course of business. Returns also must be filed on aircraft and marine vessels. If you own furnished rental property, all appliances, furniture, and fixtures should be returned. Uh, personal property taxpayers can file their returns in a variety of ways. The assessor's office encourages businesses, individuals, and tax professionals to utilize the new e-returns services, TaxScribe, to file returns. To utilize e-returns, visit bpp.com taxscribe.app forward slash GA or whitfieldassessor.com and click on the personal property e-returns icon found on the quick links menu. The Board of Assessors also accepts returns in personal and by mail. If you have questions about personal property returns, visit whitfieldassessor.com or call the Board of Assessors office at 706-275-7410. In more local news, the City of Dalton's Public Works Department will be inspecting the grounds of the West Hill Cemetery next week and removing items from grave sites that are prohibited by city ordinance. This effort, effort is being made to ensure that the cemetery is in compliance with local ordinances and also to ensure the safety of maintenance personnel when mowing and maintenance work begins in the spring. Many of the prohibited items are a hazard when landscapers use lawnmowers and weed eaters in the cemetery. The cleanup work is scheduled for January 16th through the 19th, and families have until then to remove any property from grave sites that is prohibited by the ordinance. City Ordinance 30-6 concerns what items are allowed to be left in the cemetery and what types of items are prohibited. Here's a few things you might need to know about the cemetery's rules. Artificial arrangements will be removed from the cemetery by the city after two months or when they become disarranged. Potted plants are allowed as long as they remain in good condition, watered, and taken care of by the owner of the lot. And when a new burial is made by, on any cemetery lot, all flowers will be removed after 10 days except one or two artificial arrangements and one or two potted plants in good condition may be left. Seasonal arrangements such as Christmas, Easter, etc., wreaths and flowers will be removed after 30 days. If any lot has an abundance of flowers or wreaths which cause a maintenance uh, problem to the lot, the cemetery sexton may remove those which interfere with maintenance. No permanent planting of any kind is allowed. The city will do all planting of trees, shrubs, etc. as space allows. Only clay, plastic, or recessible type containers will be allowed for flowers. And finally, if trees or shrubs situated in any lot in the old section of the cemetery shall, by their roots or branches, become detrimental to adjacent lots or avenues, or unsightly or 
inconvenient to visitors, it shall be the duty of the cemetery sexton, and he shall have the right to enter the lot and remove the trees and shrubs or such parts there, thereof as he shall determine to be detrimental or unsightly or inconvenient. The list of items that are not allowed includes rocks, gravel, stones, blocks, bricks, wire, wire stands, signs, shells, crockery, glass, ceramics, figurines, toys, or other materials deemed hazardous to personnel and maintenance equipment. Cemetery Sexton Terrell Stallings said last year that the most common violations currently present in the cemetery include some items you might not expect to see, such as full bottles of beer left on headstones. The Cemetery Sexton's office can be reached at 706-281-1245. Welcome back to your local news. If you have not gotten a flu shot yet, do not wait any longer, says the Georgia Department of Public Health. Flu activity is widespread throughout Georgia, and the current flu report lists flu activity at the highest level. Kathleen E. Toomey, Commissioner of the Georgia Department of Public Health, said it's not too late to get a flu shot. Every individual over the age of six months should get a flu vaccine, she said, not just for their own protection, but to protect others around them who may be more vulnerable to the flu and its complications. Toomey added that even if the vaccine doesn't completely prevent illness from flu, it can help reduce the severity and risk of serious complications and keep people out of the hospital. Flu symptoms and their intensity can vary from person to person and can include fever, cough, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, body aches, headache, chills, and fatigue. Some people are at higher risk of developing serious flu-related complications if they get sick. This includes people aged 65 years and older, people of any age with certain chronic medical conditions such as asthma, diabetes, or heart disease, pregnant women and children younger than five years old, but especially those younger than two years old. Flu vaccine is widely available at public health departments, doctor's offices, grocery stores, neighborhood clinics, and pharmacies. In some cases, healthcare providers may recommend the use of antiviral drugs that fight against the flu in your body. Antiviral drugs are prescription medicines and are most effective when taken within 48 hours of symptoms appearing. There are other tried and true measures you can take to help prevent the spread of flu. These are frequent and thorough hand washing with soap and warm water. Use an alcohol-based gel if you don't have access to soap and water. Cough or sneeze into the crook of your elbow or arm. Avoid touching your face as flu germs can get into the body through mucous membranes, uh, membranes of your nose, mouth, and eyes. If you are sick, stay home from school or work. You should be free of a fever without using a fever reducer for at least 24 hours before returning to school or work. For more information about flu and how to prevent it, log on to dph.georgia.gov forward slash flu. You can monitor Georgia weekly influenza reports at the website as well. These reports are updated each Friday. Now here's some good news. Like holiday decorations, gas prices are coming down, says AAA. The Georgia gas price average continues to drop at the pump compared to a week ago. Georgia drivers are now paying an average price of $2.97 per gallon for regular unleaded gasoline. Monday's state average was two cents less than a week ago, nine cents less than a month ago, and 15 cents more than this time last year. It now costs an average of $44.55 to fill a 15-gallon tank of regular gasoline. Georgians are paying $1.35 less to fill up at the pump compared to a month ago. According to AAA, now that the holiday season is in our rearview mirror, fewer Georgians are filling up at the pump, and low demand appears to be driving the force lowering prices at the pump. Drivers can anticipate pump prices to ebb and flow in January. According to data from the Energy Information Administration, gas demand nosedived from 9.17 to 7.95 million barrels a day last week. Meanwhile, total domestic gasoline stocks increased substantially by 10.9 million barrels to 237 million, million barrels. Weak gas demand alongside increased supply has pushed pump prices lower.
However, rising oil prices have limited price decreases. If gas demand remains weak, drivers will likely continue to see pump prices trickle downward. Now check out this beautiful litter of country music German Shepherd puppies. The Humane Society of Northwest Georgia present Garth, Reba, Shania, and Martina. They are about 10 weeks old. These adorable pups are looking for their forever homes. If you'd like to add to your family with one or more of them, go to hsnwga.org to apply. On the website, you can also fill out an application to volunteer. The Humane Society is open to the public on Fridays from 3 to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. They are located at 1210 Veterans Drive in Dalton. When we return, Susan Ridley will share WDNN's community calendar. But first, here's your local weather. Today's local weather is brought to you by Sean Wallen of Wallen Realty. It's time for WDNN's Community Calendar. I'm Susan Ridley and here are some things going on around the area. The Creative Arts Guild in Dalton invites you to be one of the first to see and shop from their yard sale. Enjoy refreshments and beverages while shopping from a collection of gently loved and close out artwork from across all mediums at great prices. It's the perfect chance to start or add to your personal art collection for your home or business. Admission is free, and this is a family-friendly event. Kids can enjoy creating their own work of art in a design space just for them. The event will take place on Friday, January 19th from 5.50 to 7 p.m. at the Creative Arts Guild. The Cartersville Area Writers Group invites those interested in writing and those who are already writing out to their monthly meeting on Tuesday, January 16th. This month is free to the public, so if you've been curious and you would like to come check it out, this is a great time to do so. There will be several free meetings this year and several perks for CAW members. You can learn more about membership details on the Cartersville Area Writers Facebook page or at cartersvilleareawritersgroup.com. At the meeting, the calendar for 2024 will be discussed, the CAW board members will be introduced, and attendees will interact with some fun writing challenges to jumpstart your 2024 writing resolution. Be sure to bring something you're working on to share. Also, Chris Owens will be there to share with you his plans for an all-new CAW critique group. There will be copies of the group's anthology, The Crow Speaks, available for purchase at $10 a copy. The meeting will take place at the Georgia Highlands Cartersville Campus, Building A, Room 135. The Woodsongs Dalton Concert Series, now in its 12th year, will kick off the 2024 series with High Fidelity, an award-winning bluegrass band, on Saturday, January 27th, 7 p.m. at the First Presbyterian Church in Dalton. The band consists of five outstanding musicians and singers who are steeped in the sounds of tradition. Proceeds from the concert will benefit the DEO Clinic, a nonprofit medical clinic providing free health care to low income residents of Whitfield and Murray counties. Advanced tickets are $20 or $24 at the door. Tickets are available online at woodsongdalton.com, at the Dalton Freight Depot gift shop, Bingham Discount Music, and at the door. The Love Day Market is set for February 3rd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the North Georgia Fairgrounds. There will be 60 unique vendors set up. If you'd like to submit information on your event for North Georgia News Now's community calendar, send an email to info at WDNNTV.com. That's it for this edition of North Georgia News Now. Be sure to visit us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Thanks for watching Local. I'm Susan Ridley, reminding you that it doesn't cost a nickel to be kind.